Hi, welcome to this new video in which I'm trying to give you the suggestion on which YubiKey you should buy because there are more than one version of YubiKey, they have different in prices uh, and you should choose the one that suits your need. So it is not always the best choice to choose the most expensive one because you have other options. First of all, I want to thank Yubico for sending me for free a security key NFC for review. And this is it. And I'm gonna compare it with the feature of the YubiKey 5 NFC. And as you can see, they seems almost identical. Uh, the only thing that differentiating in the package is the 5 NFC is green. And all of my previous video were made using Yubico 5 NFC that is the most expensive one of, of the two and is the, that one that has most feature. So I'm gonna tell you which feature you're gonna miss if you buy a security key standard, but for people that are not developer, that are not working in the IT, probably the standard security key NFC is enough so you can save money and have the same level of security. In Yubico's site, you have a nice page called Quiz that makes uh, some question to you to let you understand which is the right key for you. But basically, I'm going to explain you the major difference between the four um, series of product and probably you need to choose between only two of the series and probably it is quite easy to understand which is the right key for you. As you can see from the compare product page, you can see that you have four main line of product and they have a quite big difference in prices. The YubiKey 5 series, that one I used in all my previous video, is about 50 euros excluded taxes, excluded VAT. While the security key series is less expensive, it starts for 25, so it half the price. So for the price of two security key series, you can get only one YubiKey 5 series. So it's worth understanding if the security key is enough for you without going to the most expensive one, to the 5 series, and understanding if you really need those features. Then you have the latest two uh, products, uh, lines, and the FIPS is for um, enhanced security. And if you don't know what FIPS is, you don't need it. And the bio series allow you to use biometric to unlock the key instead of a standard pin. And in my opinion, it's not a thing that people really, really need. So in my opinion, a standard user had to choose between the YubiKey 5 series and the security key series. So basically in the format supported, the only difference is that the security key series does not come with a lightning port, but this is not so important now that everything is going to have a USB-C connector, so this is not a problem. But if you still have devices, Apple devices with Lightning, you should understand that Security Key Series has no Lightning version, has only USB-A and USB-C, and clearly NFC. Now, the Yubico is also sponsored by Lucifer, that is trying to make me not to record this video. Okay. <laughs> then as you can see, the security key series does not support Yubico Authenticator. And you can find a link in the description below to my previous video where I show what is Yubico Authenticator. But basically it's an application that runs on your phone and on your computer in command line and allows you to store the standard QR code you set for two-factor authentication inside your key instead of storing inside of Google Authenticator on your phone. Another thing you're gonna miss from the security key series is the personalization tool. Basically, is the tool that allows you to configure the two slot of the key because the YubiKey 5 series has two slot and the second slot can be used to work with tools like Kepas XC as an example, as I have done in a previous video, link below. So it's another feature you can miss, but both of these features are meant for maybe an advanced user, but you're gonna, you can live without it because for standard two-factor authentication, you can still use your Google Microsoft Authenticator. And for Keepas XG, probably you have a um, commercial alternative and you can use um, other tool. So it's not a thing that you're really gonna miss.
Then when it's time to the real cool function, you have WebAuthn, FIDO2. So basically the security key, it can be used with FIDO2 and can be used as a passkey because now passkey is the term that we are using for this kind of authentication. And you have all the features of the Ubico 5 series. So you have FIDO2, CTAP1, CTAP2, the universal second factor. But now scrolling down, you start looking at feature that are gonna miss from security series. All these features are features that I call uh, developer feature. Because if you are a developer, you probably are gonna miss those features. But if you are not a developer, if, if you are a standard person looking for a more secure way to secure your account, you probably does not need this function. The smart card, the PIV compatible, it's the ability for the key to store certificate and it uses it in various form of uh, SSH, uh, credential. So all of this, the OAuth, HOTP, OAuth, TOTP are other form of uh, one-time token that can be used with other tools like I told you before, KPASS, XC, but they are really rarely used and it's not a feature that you're gonna find in uh, a lot of places. So if you don't know, even know what this kind of, um, term means you are not gonna need it. And a precisation is needed by the for the smart card PIV compatible, because I told you that this is the module that can store a, a chain of certificate for even for SSH. But this does not mean that the Ubico, the security key series, it cannot work with SSH because SSH in the latest SSH version from the 8.2 version and on and subsequent version use FIDO2 protocol. And I'll dedicate an entire video to it to clarify this, um, this thing. So even if the security key series has no smart card, it's no PIV compatible, it does not mean you cannot use to secure your SSH. If you are a developer, you can miss the open PGP because even if PGP is not so used in the wild, you can use it for um, making a cryptographically signed Git commit. So in GitHub, you can have commit be verified by a key that is securely stored inside your YubiKey. And as a developer, this is a feature you can uh, miss. So if you are a developer and if you're working with GitHub, well, consider the YubiKey 5 series because the open PGP function is a feature that you are really gonna like. Then you have certification, as you can see, all the key have quite the same certification, except the YubiKey 5 FIPS, because it has external certification and it's used in some very controlled environment. So it has NIST FIPS uh, 14A-2 certification. I don't even remember what this certification is. But from this point of view, the YubiKey 5 and the YubiKey series are equal and well, strangely enough, the security key has also FIDO L2 um, certification, but it's not a feature that you're really gonna miss from the YubiKey 5. Then you have cryptographic specification. As you can see, the YubiKey 5 supports um, almost everything. And um, again, I want to assure you, even if you see that the security key series does not support cryptography with ED25519, in reality, you can use with SSH, and I'll show you in a subsequent video that will be dedicated to SSH with the standard security key series. And for password manager, um, you can use uh, Keeper, and LastPass Premium is not supported with security key, key, key series. I don't know why, because it's not supported, but one password and Bitwarden, uh, these are uh, the other two most common uh, password manager users, and I really like one password. They are both supported in UBK5 and UBK series uh, standard. So even in uh, this set of features, you can still live with a security key without any problem. The other difference is the more form factor you have for the security five series because uh, in for the standard security key, you have only the USB-C and the USB-A, but for security key five, you have also, as I told you before, Thunderbolt, but you have also the nano version. And the nano version are the latest two in this picture, and they are very, very small and are meant to be attached um, 
to your laptop and left uh, uh, left attached to your laptop so or, or your computer so you can always have your YubiKey inserted in your machine. And this is a convenient way to not uh, forgetting your YubiKey uh, in, in, into your house and uh, maybe go to work, open your laptop and you don't have your YubiKey. But this should not happen because you should at least have two YubiKeys with you and I prefer three. So one is in a safe, the other is in your keychain, and the other one is with your laptop. So uh, if you need some form factor like the Nano, yeah, you need to go for the Yubico 5 series because the YubiKey, the standard security key, has only the the equivalent of the first two, the YubiKey uh, USB-A or USB-C. As a final information, the latest firmware, the 5.7 firmware, contains an enhancement for your YubiKey and it gives you the ability to store up to 100 passkey inside the YubiKey. Previously, it was 25. But as you should already know, and I'm going to repeat you, you cannot update the firmware of your key. And this is a security measure because it will prevent unauthorized attacker if they get in contact, if they can uh, steal the key from you, they cannot update the firmware or using a vulnerable firmware to extract the key. So sadly enough, if you have a previous version of the firmware, you can store only 25 passkey in your security key. And this is valid for both the key from both the five and the security key. So it's not important which version you have. In the previous version, you have only 25 passkey. If you buy the key now, you have the firmware 5.7 or greater, and you will have space for 100 passkey. So basically, when it's time to choose the right key for you, I strongly suggest that if you're not a developer, go directly for the security key because it costs way less money than the 5, and you're not going to use the feature of the 5 probably. So if you are the kind of security enthusiast or you are a person that want to have a better security posture and you want to start your journey in having a security key, you can save the money and have probably the same level of security. Why, if you are a developer or you are working in the IT, well, probably the YubiKey 5 has some, some extra feature for you, like the support for PGP to send your commit or a full support for SSH key stored in hardware. So this, these are two features that you can miss in your basic security key. So probably it is better you try to use the security 5 NFC because you're going to like this extra feature. And the only feature that can be useful for everyone is the Ubico Authenticator that they used to store the old version TOTP, the one you got in the site when you get to scan your QR code with your Google Authenticator app. And I must admit, I use it a lot, that feature, because we still have a lot of sites that use this kind of two-factor of authentication. And using Yubico Authenticator, I don't worry about changing my phone, forgetting my phone, because all of my security key has the ability to generate TOTP. But even this feature is not a killer feature given the widely adoption of passkey. Now, in the latest time, we have more and more sites that are implementing passkey. So you're not going to need your authenticator, nor Google authenticator, nor Ubiq authenticator, because you can simply use the FIDO2 protocol on your key. So this is a feature that, you know, at the date of today, it's useful, but maybe tomorrow, not anymore. So as a general rule of thumb, if you are not a developer or you are not working directly in the IT, go for the basic security key. If you are a developer or you are working with the IT, evaluate if it's convenient to have the security five series because it's going to give you more feature and feature that I'm using in my everyday work. So they are really useful. Bye-bye, and see you on the next video on the series.